Hi there bookworms and welcome back to my channel. Nurse Evans here. All right, all right, you guys caught me. Of course, you know I'm not a real nurse, but what I am doing is representing one of the most critical and important career fields that we have in society. Now, it's very funny that I mentioned the word career because our new series is all about STEM careers. And of course, I already know you're gonna ask me, Miss Evans, what does STEM even mean? Now, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. So in this series, every video that we'll be watching will be highlighting one of the careers that falls under these categories. So if you're thinking about becoming the future of STEM careers locally or internationally, go for your notebooks and your pens because a lot of information will be provided for you. All right, let's get right into this one. All right, bookworms. So as promised, I am here with the veterinarian at the Hope Zoo. <laughs> And she also has a very special guest. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that this guest has made an appearance on my channel before. So everyone, I want to welcome Dr. Khan and Kimberly. Hi, everyone. So as mentioned, my name is Arian Khan and I'm the veterinarian here at Hope Zoo. And this is my friend Kimberly. She's a ball python. Who is a veterinarian? So, basically what a vet is, is that we're animal doctors. So similarly to when you feel sick and you go to a doctor and they either perform tests or ask you questions to try and figure out what's wrong. And then when they do figure out what's wrong, they either give you treatments or prescribe medication to help you feel better. We do that, but with every single other animal species on this planet. So when a dog or a cat or a lion or a zebra is sick, a vet is the one that helps them to feel better. What does a veterinarian do? All right, so I'm gonna try to simplify what vets do into three main roles. So what we do is prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases in animals. So prevention means that we basically do things in order to ensure that the animal does not get sick in the first place and if the animal does get sick then we can either perform tests or ask questions in order to find out exactly what is going on and when we do know what the cause of the illness is then we either do certain procedures or prescribe medication or even perform surgeries to help the animal feel better so that is basically what my job here at the zoo is i try to prevent diagnose and treat illnesses in the animals here at, the, here at the zoo, in our zoo collection, as well as any native wildlife that might be brought in to us by either the public or the National Environmental Planning Agency, which is called NEPA. What should we know about veterinarians? I would like you guys to really get an appreciation of how heavy our responsibility is as veterinarians. So, in order for us to effectively treat these animals, that means that we'd have to learn how each and every single animal's body is made up, and which is called their anatomy, and then also learn how each of their bodies works. So for instance, we have to learn that a cow has four stomachs, whereas a camel has three stomachs. This influences the way that each of these animals break down or digest their food. This influences the kinds of food that they're supposed to eat in order for them to be healthy. This also um, has implications for the kind of diseases that each of these animals get because they're all made up so differently. And we have to know all of these things so that we can be able to take care of them properly. What are some animal fun facts you can share? Okay. So these are three of our dromedary camels. So this is Moses on the left hand side, that's Betsy in the middle, and that's Cindy over there. So we're gonna be feeding them some hibiscus, which is their favorite. Um, here you go, Betsy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so as I said, these are dromedary camels. So the other kind of camels that we have are either dromedary or Bactrian camels. So dromedary camels, which we have here, have one hump. 
whereas bacteria and camels have two humps and a common, miscon Ooh, a common misconception with camels is that they have water in their homes it's actually fat so <laughs> they store fat in their homes for periods when they go for a long time with, without either food or water so they can break it down Ooh, careful moses they can break down the fat in their humps to help to sustain themselves during periods where they don't have enough food or water um, they also have I don't know if you can see their long eyelashes which helps to keep out sand and dust that might blow into their eyes while they're in the desert. Oh careful! <laughs> and they have these really wide but really soft feet um, that help them to traverse the sandy deserts and if you actually hear them coming you see how large they are you would think that they would make heavy steps, right? They're so quiet, so they can sneak up on you. A huge thank you to the newest members of our Apple to Primary Ooh. family.